birth story. Do you guys really want to know my birth story? Should I tell it? It's not that big of a story. It's just, I mean, it is kind of fascinating because I guess everyone's is so different. Okay, so my birth story was like not that exciting. Like my whole thing is just like I didn't die. And that's the story. You know, I was down for anything. I didn't want to be one of those people that was like planning a C-section, even though there's nothing wrong with that. I really wanted to try to do it vaginal um, in case I wanted to have another kid afterwards or something. Um, went in. Um, I don't know, put up Christmas lights because Jimmy Kimmel told me I should. Um, I need to work on this story. And then I, I induced. That's important. And then like, I got uh, the epidural. Um, yes, the anesthesiologist did ask me for a photo while I was <laughs> faced. Um, and then started pushing. Baby was pretty quick. Actually, this is, I guess, what's interesting. So baby wouldn't come out because my pussy is too tight. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and he was like, what's this called? Wavering? Like going back and forth? But not perseverating. That's when it's mental. But he was just like, he would start coming out and then would get pulled back. Stop coming back. And was getting really stressed out. So she then said, uh, we need to get out the vacuum. Okay. And she's like, can we vacuum? Uh, and I was like, yeah, of course. Va to like vacuum his head. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna have a conehead baby. God damn it. Although that was one of my favorite movies growing up because my dad looked exactly like Dan Aykroyd. Different story for another day. And so then she's like, we need to do the vacuum. And I'm like, cool. And like five people walk in the room with like paperwork for me to like sign. And I was just like, I'm not. <laughs> Add vacuum. How many people have sued you? Yeah. The L that it felt like the most LA shit. I'm like, what kind of after you vacuumed or did what you, the doctor had to yeah. do then later was like, I'm suing you because my bed has had. Well, their skin will look like it's a beanie. Their skin will look they, like a beanie. After they do the vacuum on some babies, their skin gets like a big... Is it pop. alive or not? Yeah, really. Okay. Look, some... I mean, is that what happened to Clay Aiken? Is that why his head looked... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hot reference, guys. Um, and <laughs> you got any uh, Ruben Stutter jokes? <laughs> <laughs> I love it because in my head, I was like, don't offend anyone like relevant. And I'm just like, Steve Martin, not loud. I just have, I've just come after so many people in this live that consume me that I'm just like trying to like, I don't know. Um, so I was just like, you guys, I, I, you need a better system. You know, you know what they needed? A button. <laughs> can you guys have a button installed that where I, I can just automatically sign it? Because right now my body is breaking in half. I really like don't have time to read the fine print of whatever this contract is that I'm signing. So she starts vacuuming. That doesn't work. And then she's like, I'm going to need to cut you. I have an episiotomy. At which point my gynecologist pulls out the biggest scissors I've ever seen. Like, like, you know, the scissors they use, the mayor uses to open a new store, like if they're opening like a new car dealership <laughs> in Toledo, the it, hula hoops they were the they old. might <laughs> like they might as well have said like Acme on the side. Like they were just these like cartoon scissors and it, to make a two inch incision. I don't know what's going on. So then baby finally comes out and you know how like when you see in like movies or whatever, the baby will come up to the chest. He only like came up to my belly button. I guess he had an unusually short umbilical cord. I don't know what that even means. <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong during my pregnancy. Have you even heard of that? I have not. I I haven't heard of an unusually long one either. That would be good too. <laughs> You're really good at spinning shit, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to frame it. So <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate uh, uh, you doing that. I don't know. Maybe whatever. I took a couple Advil when I was pregnant. I'm just gonna say it. Okay. I broke some of the rules. I ate some brie cheese. I had some sushi. <laughs> so maybe maybe it was that. But so he was just being pulled back basically every time he came out whatever, or maybe I'm an unusually long person. I don't know what it is. And then comes up, they stitch me up. Is like, are there anything else? Um, oh no, this turned off. Oh, 
And then I don't remember the rest. I was on literal drugs. Um, I went to the other uh, room and uh, his first visitor was Sia. Sia came and he was crying his head off. And Sia came and um, while he was having something done, because they do all these tests, she was like singing to him. And then I was like, just on drugs. I don't know. I just went cheap thrills. I was like on whatever drug made me want to hear <laughs> cheap thrills. By I was in cheap thrills zone. See ya. And I was like, sing cheap thrills. And she sang it. And he immediately stopped crying. <laughs> um, and then I could not stand all the overhead lighting. I know that's shocking given how much you guys make fun of how lit this podcast studio was. Like it was just driving me nuts that every time my baby would fall asleep these, someone would come in and turn the lights. It was just driving me nuts. So I got out of there in under 24 hours. Is that a good, and then I feel like I'm about to get a bill. I just feel a bill coming. <laughs> it feels too good to be true that I just got in and out of a hospital <laughs> without like a 10,000. Does a bill come so at some a point? Get, a lot of people like 18 months later, I'll get hit with like $40,000. 40, can you imagine? 